Hello, my name is Josiah Ray, and I'm going to show you how to install Java in Eclipse. Eclipse is an IDE or integrated developing environment that kind of gives you um, the ability to do shorthand creation of Java applications. So instead of having to code the creation of a button and then mess around with its placement pixel by pixel till you get it just right, you can drag a button out and plop it onto a, floor, onto a form and Eclipse will automatically generate the code that you need to create that button for you. So it's a way to really speed your programs up a little bit. So the first thing that you need to do is download the Java D -E, uh, JDK or Java Developers Kit and the Eclipse install. It's important to get the JDK rather than the just the, I believe it's the JRE because you're going to be doing, uh, presumably you're going to be doing a lot more development with it and the other version doesn't have most of the tools that you'll need. The steps to do to install this are you want to install Java first, the Java Developer Kit first, and then you're going to install Eclipse, and that's going to make things go a little bit easier. If you've already got Eclipse installed, don't worry, this will still work. It'll still work with uh, integrating into a newer version of Java as well. Now, uh, you see here on my desktop, I've got already got the files downloaded, and when you download this Java executable, all you have to do is run it and follow the instructions. The Eclipse download is going to be a compressed folder. You don't need to actually install Eclipse if you haven't done it already. It just gives you the folder and you move that folder to wherever you want and Eclipse will just run right from there. Now, the first problem that a lot of people run into is that they have downloaded the wrong version, as, wrong bit version of Eclipse or Java. If you have a 32-bit system, you must use the 32-bit version. If you have a 64-bit system, you can use either. And that's where the problems come in, because you can have a 32-bit version of Java and a 64-bit version of Eclipse, or vice versa, and they will not work together. They will give you errors, and you won't be able to find out why, but that's the first thing to check. Make sure you're using the correct version. I've created this shortcut to Eclipse right on my desktop, so I'm going to fire that up real quick. Um, to show you what steps you need to take after you've done all of the installs. While you're installing Eclipse, take the time to set your path variable, and I'll show you how to do that uh, right after Eclipse boots up. The path variable is basically how Eclipse is going to find your Java uh, runtime environment, so it knows um, how to create Java stuff is basically stored in there. If it can't find that, Eclipse will not load correctly. You're going to get cannot find a J um, INI or something like that library and that's why. It's because your path variable is set incorrectly. The confusing bit is for the 32-bit version your Java runtime environment is going to be in the program files with the parentheses x86. If it's the 64-bit version it's going to be in the regular program files folder. So there's two program files folder your path variable has to be pointing to the correct one. And I'll show you how to set that in just a minute. Okay, Eclipse is loaded and we see the, uh, the welcome page here. I'm gonna leave real quick just to show you what the path variable looks like. You go to your start icon, I'm running Windows 7 by the way. So the start icon, and then we're going to go to control panel, and into system, and under advanced system settings. Now you can get to this pretty much the same way in Vista. In XP, the, the steps are a little bit different. Here underneath the, uh, in the system properties, it'll probably pop up with your computer name first, etc. Go to the advanced tab and down in environment variables. And now you want to go to, you'll see that there's a path variable here with a lowercase. Ignore that. This is underneath the variables for your user. You want to go underneath the system variables. And it's going to have it's not going to have this path. It's going to have path text. So what you need to do is you need to create a new variable. Name it all uppercase path. And then you're going to point it to wherever the Java runtime environment is. So for mine, I'm running a 64-bit version. So I'm going to go to C, Program Files, Java, and then into the Java RE or Runtime Environment 7. And then the bin is what you want. And so you can just grab that and copy it and paste it inside of your, your variable creation dialog. And that will set the, the path so that Eclipse will know where your Java thing is. 
So now we've got Eclipse set up and we've got Java set up. To add that runtime environment in, what we're going to do is go up to Preferences. Hang on. Just find it real quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to Window, Preferences, and we're going to select Java. And you expand down this Java thing, come to Install JREs, or Java Runtime Environments, and it's going to pop up this window that shows all of the Java Runtime Environments that it knows about. If it can't see yours, you need to click Add, Standard VM, and then you're going to tell it where it lives. So we're going to select the directory and go to C, uh, Computer, C, Program Files, Java, you know, just like we did before, and the JRE. Click the JRE and say OK. And it's automatically going to name it for you, and it's going to pull up all the resources that are related to it. But you notice it's giving us this error that it's already in use, so click Cancel. This check mark next to it in the list means that's the default runtime environment. I installed Java first, and so when Eclipse installed, it found that path variable, located the only runtime environment, and installed it all by itself. So that's why I, that's why I installed Java before Eclipse. You can do this in the opposite order, but you have to go through all of these steps. I personally did not have to manually add in the runtime environment because Eclipse automatically located it for me. So I hope you've, you've enjoyed this tutorial on how to install Java in Eclipse. I'm Josiah Ray.